You got doing all right. a thing. They did a thing on you. You got an interview and a thing. And yeah. A- uh, Rocky Mountain Cancer Center um, interviewed me for their blog. Um, and what they did, which I was very appreciative of, it was very important to me to share Dan's story as well. Because um, nice. he was also treated by Rocky Mountain Cancer Center. Um, so they were nice enough to include that for me. They did. A re- they made me sound a lot cooler than I am. <laughs> like they made me sound like a badass and i'm like oh uh, okay well thanks okay. <laughs> yeah and of course absolutely nothing else happened this week absolutely nothing else happened this anywhere. week. anywhere nothing happened anywhere with anything it's been it's been so boring in the especially America. not especially not in pennsylvania nothing happened in Pennsylvania, nothing at all. Like we're we're at the point in this season of America where it's all just filler episodes, because like we're not moving the plot along at all. I I you know, I know people get all like, oh, it's political. All I can say is, all I want to say about it is, God, can everything just stop for fuck's sake? Yeah, five. Every now, and then meme of like, I'm so tired of living through a historical event. Five minutes. I would just, just like to live through some awesome historical events. You know, you you don't need to know this, but I go and poop, and I take I take the phone with me to poop, and I I, I read on the phone. I would like to poop. With not out having an anxiety attack. Please. Now, some of you may be saying, well, just don't take the phone with you. Yeah, you can switch to a book. To which I say, F you, it's my phone. As you can tell, I have been making some improvements. And it's, I'm getting used to a new workflow, as as they say. Well, speaking of workflows, um, this guy's job. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I would get used to either. You'd think after the first time someone tried something like this and it didn't work, they would say, I probably shouldn't do that. Not, oh, he just didn't do it the right way. I'm sure my technique will be much better. I am, of course. Well, I mean, men. I, I am, of course, men have been of, telling women on the Internet that we're ugly for not agreeing with you since there's been an Internet and it has never gotten anyone anywhere. Well, in this case, I'm speaking, of course, of putting 100 live snakes down your pants. For fun and profit. Hong Kong, a man was caught trying to smuggle more than 100 live snakes into mainland China by stuffing them into his pants. Custom officers in the southern Chinese city of Shenzhen intercepted the man traveling through Fushun Port, checkpoint between Hong Kong and mainland China. Aren't those red stripey ones like venomous? God only knows. It's it's red meets yellow. Kill a fellow. Red touches black. You're fucked. I don't know how it goes. I don't know. I don't like the red, black and white ones. Those are supposed to be, I think. During inspection. During inspection, officers found six canvas draw bags sealed with tape in the pockets of his pants. Was he wearing those fucking cargo pants? Like, come on. Like, dude, I I have worn the cargo pants before. But you know why? When I wore the cargo pants, when I was running around taking down interviews at conventions like Dragon Con and stuff, and I couldn't stop for a second. I needed all the pockets. There was shit in those pockets. The comments are going to be mad at you for that, bro. What for the for the cargo pants? Every time pants? I come for cargo pants, the internet gets so bad. Well, they just they're comfortable and they have lots of pockets. You don't need all them pockets. You don't need all that. No, you don't. They they gonna be mad. That's all. Do I'm you saying. have a hundred snakes to put in all your pockets? Is that? Well, I might, maybe I have a hundred snakes. Five species. Somebody of snakes. in the comments is going to be like, "Well, actually, yeah, I do have a hundred snakes, and I have to take them all to to the drugstore for their candy." Five species of snakes were later identified: the milk snake, western hognose snake, corn snake, Texas rat snake, and bull snake. 
four of which are non-native to China. None of the species are venomous. Statements that the incident huh. occurred a few days ago did not specify when. Customs agency did not say if the man was arrested, but warned that if the regulations are violated, the customs will pursue legal liability in accordance with the law. So he had a bunch of what, poor rats. Can we snakes. talk about these poor snakes? Yes. But poor, poor, you got poor like a hundred snakes. snakes just piled on each other in Ziploc bags. And they're all different know if you'll species. Notice. Snakes need air too. Yeah. They need to breathe. They have little nostrils on their cute little faces. Nothing, nothing. Like just because they're not cute and fluffy doesn't mean they don't deserve to be comfortable. Nothing a snake has ever done has has caused them to deserve to be shoved down a man's pants. No. Nothing. I'm even t- I, even if you're like Garden of Eden and shit, even then. All he did, like all he did was get was get, you know, s- offered some fruit and shit. You don't stuff someone in your pants for that. Okay. They didn't have pants. There you go. So that 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 yeah, that the fuck this happens. Oh, I, it what does. concerns? And I get like, cons- it's a legal pet trade, I guess. Well, what concerns me is, is this ever successful? Because if it is, it we surely. Be. So there are day in, day out. If this is a, a successful tactic and this, the other people don't get caught, there are people crossing borders all over the world every day. With snakes in their pants. That's a thing we do. That's one of those things we have to explain to the aliens because they're not going to fucking understand it. What's the. What's the Phineas and Ferb song? Is it lobsters in my pants? Damn it. I am not aware of this. This. When my nephew was nine and I, squirrels in my pants. Thank you. When my nephew was nine and I lived at the house, we watched a lot of Phineas and Ferb. Uh, So uh, we're going to Hawaii for this one. Not often Hawaii shows up here, but uh, oh, when they do, look, I don't know if you were, if, if you've been aware, but um, 20 years ago, uh, a little over 20 years, coming on 25 years. Um, something happened with a couple planes and it was bad. Oh, my and, God. It's that long ago. Yeah, it is. It is. And everybody was fairly sure this is bad. And we made a whole bunch of changes specifically because it was bad. I don't know if you didn't a lot get of those the memo. changes were purely cosmetic and don't do shit. True. But they make well, us feel better about ourselves. We, we, we've we we've had these changes in place. Some people have lived their entire lives. They don't. Man, some people don't remember when you could just if you wanted to meet somebody off the plane, you just walked over and you could sit at the gate, and wait for them to get off the plane. It used to be if you were used taking to someone to the airport, you could wait for them, wait with them for their plane yeah. and watch at the window and wave to the plane as they left. Yeah. But you know what? Now, if you're at the curb too long, they start looking at you funny. You know what they never used to let you do then or now? And that is (sighs) take along fake grenades in your fucking luggage. Come on. And that's not even look at that. Look at that fucking picture. Imagine you're the TSA. Bag goes through, bag goes through. Hold up. No way. Hold up. Wait, what? That, Wait, that can't what? be infrared, right? That's x-ray. That's how their x-ray works. Like I think they colorize it so that they can identify things. Okay. Because so. I'm like... No. <laughs> Hilo, Hawaii. Hilo International Airport was temporarily evacuated Tuesday morning. After what looked like two grenades were found during an x-ray screening of a passenger's carry-on luggage. This wasn't even put under the plane. This was, I'm going to throw these in my pocket. It'll be fine. In case you need your fake grenade mid-flight. You never know. 
Incident happened around 5.30 a.m. According to a spokesperson for the Transportation Security Administration, agents were conducting routine screening of the passenger's carry-on bag when they spotted the suspicious items. Police evacuated the terminal and called in the bomb squad. Turns out the two grenades were inert or replicas. They just look like the old pineapple grenades. Police arrested Akito Fukushima, 41, of Kanazawa, Japan. I think I said that right. On suspicion of first-degree terroristic threatening. Although he did not make any threat or brandish the grenade, it being discovered in a controlled environment through the screening process did cause alarm to TSA employees. You think? You think? Well, you're a I don't know. Have you ever traveled to Hawaii? I have not. They, when you're leaving Hawaii, at least to get back into the United States, I don't know how it is for other countries. They screen things more carefully than the regular TSA does because there are things they don't want you bringing back to the mainland. Yeah. Invasive species. Like produce, like there, you know, there's all kinds of regulations about that. So there's a whole yeah. separate screening to make sure you're not like going to fuck up an ecosystem. So they're but more Tara, careful. But th these are just some fake grenades. They're fine, right? And like nobody in Hawaii would be at all nervous about shit blowing up where airplanes are. Whoever found these are not going to need laxatives for the rest of their lives. Because the minute these things went through, loads were dropped, shall we say. Because I, I can't imagine. It's my it's your job. You stand there. You're supposed to. And then this pops up. That's like, oh, shit. In the carry-on. They evacuated the entire. So everybody else missing their flights and shit. Because your dumb ass thought, ooh, I'm going to take these with me. I had that happen to me once. Have you ever had, like, I don't remember why. I don't remember Every where we time. were. Every it time. Every time. Dan Tara. and I. Oh, and, like, somebody, hell. somebody, like, went, like, tried to, like, run the wrong way through security. And they evacuated mm. the whole place. And we were standing out in a friggin' airport parking lot for, like, an hour. Every time you have one of, every time. I have lived. All right, next one. This is from California, Fresno. I always, once I got to be an adult, I realized that uh, my teachers, especially my high school teachers, lived in a precarious and barely contained loathing of our asses. Like some teachers, they're like, I like a couple of you. The rest of you could fucking die. Because after a few years, but they don't, you don't, they don't, you, I never knew it when I was in school, aside from a little hints of it, but it's like, you know, they, they do their best to contain that shit because it's their job. They have to, they, most, they're of not allowed, most of them. There's always like well, a couple of old man teachers that openly hate everybody. Well, this guy took it way past. Yeah, I wow. This motherfucker. You're not allowed to read your students for filth. California high school biology final includes racist questions, targets students. A Luther Burbank High School freshman was surprised to read his full name included on a biology final. Not only that, but he was being ridiculed. Quote, in high school, there are individuals who are cross-eyed like <gasps> name of a fellow student and name of a student previously mentioned, which is a dominant trait. We call those individuals weirdos. So if you cross two weirdos, the two students named again, that are heterozygous for being cross-eyed, what is the offspring that would result? Many students in class were targeted by first and last name in the exam. Teacher Alex Nguyen choose to describe these Nguyen. students by their... What? It's Nguyen. Nguyen? Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to get his name right because fuck him. Teacher Alex uh, Nguyen chose to describe these students by their ethnicities and physical features. 
and then paired them up, posing questions about what traits a theoretical child of these two students would have. On one question, the teacher wrote a disclaimer saying, quote, in no way do I promote students being sexually active. The students, parents and teachers said the school said the implication of any sexual relationship between students is inappropriate. You're a teacher. The That's students... the part you thought was going to be a problem. Oh, yeah, it's, it, it keeps going. The students whose parent recommended the Sacramento B not name him is half black and half Mexican. He shrugged off the question where he was disparaged, but another question shocked him for its racist overtones. Quote, for some reason, the African-American culture has influenced most of the student body. How? In African-Americans, they have a gene for the pimp walk, which is dominant. What is the result if you cross student name? Um, Hamas, I'm trying to give you the word. Dominant Latina with a recessive uh, like student name. Mong. Mong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the uh, question goes on to refer to dominant traits as walking with a limp and the recessive trait as, quote, normal. About 10 minutes. Th this it gets better. This guy was not going to be deterred. 10 minutes in the two hour exam period. The student said that Principal Jim Peterson arrived in the classroom, had a private conversation with the with teacher and collected finals. After the principal left, he continued the same exam, but put the questions on a projector and had the class write their answers on their own sheets of paper. So the principal showed up, went, no, no, give me those. Give, what, what are you doing? Go, what are you doing? Okay, we're going to keep doing it. Like, you got the caution light, bro. You, you, you got this, the, and you're like, I'm going to blast on through it. I can make it. You can just put in your two weeks notice. <laughs> next day last day of school students noticed there was a sub for Nguyen's class he also found out that he received listen a zero on the test which earned him a D in the class overall so not only did he pull this shit he fucking flunked them it's an atypical story for the student who made the honor roll in the previous semester and always seek to keep his GPA so he can remain competitive for college sports. So the dude decided just on his way out to fuck with their futures. Right. Nice. Nice. Listen, I went to high school in the hood. I'm here to tell you this would be a dead ass teacher. <laughs> this teacher would not get to his car that day. Been a biology teacher at Luther Burbank for at least 10 years. Did he just fucking snap? Well, it, it, it wasn't just a matter of fucking snapping because this was a plan. Like he printed this shit out. He typed it up when it when it wouldn't work. He put it on the overhead projector. He was determined just... to see this shit through. If he's been a teacher for 10 years, presumably this has not happened before because he would not be a teacher for 10 years. Maybe like 10 years is usually where you get tenure. Maybe he was, maybe he just figured I'm tenured motherfuckers. That's not how that, that's not how that works. It's not you, the no. high school. You don't get tenure. That, you don't. that doesn't mean they can't fire you for cause. <sighs> what in the entire fuck? And like, it's not fucking hard enough to be a teenager anyway. And like, look, I. The biggest badass I know, I have a friend who teaches junior high home economics. She teaches junior high kids with like knives and ovens. And I'm like, you're the toughest bitch I know. I'm kind that of sounds amazed terrifying. Still, I'm kind of amazed they still do like, home economics. I thought boil that was me like an a acid before you put me in a room full of 13 year olds with knives. I thought home economics not, home economics didn't exist anymore. I thought that was a relic of a bygone They do call era. it something different. I always forget what they call it, but they call it something different now. Um, but like, so I'm not saying being a teacher is fun and easy. Being a teenager is so much fucking worse. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like the day before the end of school, you're calling motherfucker out for being cross-eyed. That's terrible. And then the the whole the pimp walk gene. What? What in the entire? Mm. It... 
I don't, what the hell happened to your brain? Because there are going to be suits over this, because especially because you failed the kid, there's going to be, oh, you're not going to have a fun time. And yeah, like you have fucked with college admissions, potentially. Here's, all right, we're going to move on. Next one. This, This is a job I didn't know was possible. It never occurred to me this could be a thing. And you know what? If I had been a kid and someone had, ex- had explained to me that this existed, my entire life might have taken a, a different trajectory overall. Tara, did you know there is such a thing as a black market Lego fence? Well, yeah, but only because we covered something similar a couple weeks ago. Oh, this is even more, just even more. This, this way beyond. This isn't just the guy hoarding them. In his, <laughs> Look I at love the, the photo yes, they I love, used. Yes, I love the photo. Yes, I know. This isn't just a guy with someone in his apartment. Listen to this. This is insane. On July 3rd, a search warrant was served at the Brick Builder store in Eugene. Uh, for the Springfield Police Department's crime reduction unit after, after a lengthy examination. Here's the, here's a shot of the store. You know, it's a geeky kind of store. Um, I guess like Lego type stuff, right? Uh, SBD tells us a three-month investigation revealed the owner of Brick Builders on Willamette, uh, Amon Henriksen, was uh, knowingly purchased new unopened sets of Lego that had been stolen from local retail stores. This is be he had a storefront. He was fencing stolen Lego. He had a goddamn operation here. Many cases, suspects stole hundreds of dollars worth of Legos that exchanged the stolen items for cash at the store, most often at a fraction of the actual retail value. Like, imagine. Imagine the crow, right? Only instead of, you know, the ring, it was like a little Lego minifig. I'm so, now I'm just picturing if they did a Lego movie of the crow. <laughs> <laughs> Shit off. And I absolutely oh. think they should do that instead of the actual Scarsgard movie they made. <laughs> I would go and see the Lego <laughs> Crow because that sounds absurd. Oh, oh my God. Uh, police reports that officers learned of the suspects were allegedly utilizing the money they received to buy and use illegal drugs. Great. Um, SBD partnered with loss prevention investigators from Target, Fred Meyer, Barnes and Nobles and Walmart confirmed that Henriksen was purchasing sets that were stolen from the aforementioned retailers. Like, the minute he catches on, just put like a fucking Apple tag on that shit. The minute they caught on, they'd find out where they were ending up. Yeah. 47 years old. Man, I can't even imagine. You, you. I would love to own a store. That would be neat. That's my I mean, age. I, I, I bet a bunch of people watching right now are going like, you don't want to own a store, man. Trust me. It's you don't, you don't, man. Just just no. One of my jobs is for a small business owner and it does not seem fun. But, but you know, I, I would never think, how do you get into the business of a Lego store? And then you're like, you know what? I'm going to become the Lego kingpin. I mean, though, here's the thing. It's kind of a perfect money laundering front because you don't have to hide it's true. the illegal That's merchandise. True. You can just put it with the legit merchandise. Like you don't have to buy a nail spa to to launder your money. It might as well be drugs. Tara, do you know what someone told me? I was I was streaming the other night and someone told me this. Um Someone in the channel, in, in my, my game stream channel, mentioned that uh, the uh, the Millennium Falcon, the Lego Millennium Falcon, just a regular old $850. Wow. And I thought to myself, my oh, is, it like, one of those. is it like a special edition? Do they, did they not make it anymore? It's like, no, no, that's the new price. $850 
for the fucking oh, Millennium Falcon. Oh, like to buy Falcon. one new? Yeah, new. Not used. Oh, not like, not, not not like, like one of the original shit. ones. No, it's you go into a store, right? To, you want to buy a Millennium Falcon? Shit's gotten a little weird out there. Y'all don't even know, because when we were children, Lego was a bucket <laughs> of red, yellow, and blue bricks. And they were all one shape. Hey, they were brick shaped. And there was no instructions. You, you, you just made whatever the fuck you could figure out how to make out of red, yellow, and blue brick-shaped bricks. I've talked about There were this no somewhere. sets. And I wasn't allowed to have Lego because my mom decided it was well, a choking the, hazard. There were sets. There was Space Lego. There was Lego Land. There was the 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 Knights of Lego. And okay. but, you know, you know, there there wasn't See, like Harry Potter. I wasn't allowed to shit. have Lego. But but uh, like you just mostly if you bought Lego, it was red, yellow, and blue bricks, shaped like bricks, and you just built. A fort or something. Like when I was a kid, McDonald's every once in a while would have a Lego Happy Meal. And I would get my mom. I ate so many Happy Meals in the two months those Lego Happy Meals came out. I was getting two a week. Cause what you they give you a little baggie of Legos and you could make like a little car or a little plane, but they were Legos. So it didn't yeah. matter. You could just combine and keep combining them and make bigger and bigger <laughs> shit. Like, I've type 2 diabetes and I'm in heart failure, but I made <laughs> this little Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> the know. 80s were a magical time to be a child. They were. You guys. They were. I don't think I drank water until adulthood. <laughs> like just water. <laughs> that didn't have five tablespoons of sugar in it. <laughs> It's amazing we're alive. I don't even know how I'm alive. All right. Moving on along. The audacity of some of these people with the, yeah, at least the this guy thought he could pass it off, right? He at least had a front. The audacity of some criminals is just how did you think you were not going to get caught? How long do you think this was going to go on? Former Mount Holly bank employee accused of stealing nearly $1 million from customers' account. And it wasn't a bunch of different customers. It was all one guy. Oh. Prosecutors say Aga Hassan took the money to fund a side business, fund personal expenses, and buy real estate. Uh Former bank employees accused of scamming a customer out of nearly $1 million and using that money to fund a side business. Burlington County prosecutors say 41-year-old Aga Hassan, who worked at the uh, Santander Bank in Mount Holly. Allegedly Santander. Stole Santander. Santander. Yes. Um, allegedly stole $1 million from a customer over a six-year period. According to prosecutors, investigator began investigation began in 2023 after fraud investigators for the bank contacted police about questionable transactions conducted and overseen by Hassan, who had recently been terminated from his position at the Mount Holly office branch. Investigation re revealed, that, revealed that Hassan, who had been employed with the bank since 2014, befriended the customer and gained his trust by offering to help with bill paying. As the relationship with the customer progressed, prosecutors say Hassan began to visit the customer's house and obtained blank checks the customer had signed, as well as have the customer approve wire transfers. Hassan also used the customer's account to make significant cash withdrawals and disbursements. Authorities say Hassan took the money to fund personal expenses and buy real estate. Eventually, like, I'm at a point in my life where it, you have it's like answering the phone for me. I don't want to look at my bank account, right? I don't want to look at it because even if there's stuff in there, it's not going to be for a while. You know, it's going to go. That's just how it is. I don't want to look at it. It just makes me sad. But sometimes you do, and you're like, "Hey, wait a minute, where's that money going?" I'm more concerned, 
like I have a financial advisor to help me not okay. go bankrupt, right? Because yeah. I have like a house and stuff. So um when, when Dan passed away, I got a service to just help me manage stuff. And if that guy ever showed up at my door and was like, hey, I need you to just sign a blank check and give it to me. I would definitely be like, you're fired. And even if if this even if this is an older person, right. And they're they're just like, Charlie's about to climb the wall, by the way. Charlie. (laughs) Charlie. I see you. He is is about to climb that wall. Even if this is like, no, I'm not. Liar. Even if he's like an older person and you're you're defrauding a senior, which is hell, hellish in its own right, you work at the bank. They know who you yeah. are. Someone double checks the shit. It's kind of kind of their thing. There's a trail. There's literally a fucking trail from them to you. How you think this is going to work out eventually? Like, I know some people do this shit and they get this delusion in their head. There's like, once I hit it big, I'll just pay it all back. No harm, no foul. And then it'll all be good. Which, and, and people mm-hmm. seem to think that that's not, el- that, that what, where's the crime? Now, to be fair, there's no crime. For very wealthy people, that usually does work. Yeah. Yeah. If you do manage to make it that big, that's probably going to work. The problem is you're probably not going to make it that big. just the the thinking that no and oh my god that hairstyle and those glasses yeah he worked at a bank the hairstyle is very 90s he worked at a bank all right like i'm getting auto from beetlejuice vibes here man <laughs> like i i, I would have said a bank or worked at the irs one or the other that's that's sort of Every bassist in every 90s band nobody remembers had that haircut. <laughs> uh, one more this I'm week. Very and... distracted by whatever Charlie's doing back there. <laughs> oh, look at it. He's like, what? I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I'm sleeping. Oh, he's beating up his own tail. Yeah, he's currently his his tail is is. He doesn't understand. <laughs> he's that, like, that, what? I'm not. I'm he not doing anything. That, that lady's that a liar. Atta- he d- he doesn't know that thing's attached to him. They do usually grow out of that phase. He hasn't. He's he's like a freaking dog. He really is. Peggy and Dottie went through that phase, and he, then they bite still, their tail, and then they get mad because they because it hurts. He, does, he still does that. Oh, he's like two now. Baby. He's still doing that. <laughs> Okay, finally, we're going up in the air for this one. Oh, my God. I have never gotten this mad in my life. I don't think I have ever gotten this mad in my life. I can't imagine. That's a bold statement. I'm concerned. Passenger bites flight attendant on United Airlines flight that took off from uh, MIA forcing emergency landing. And it's Florida, of course. Miami, Miami International Airport, a United Airlines flight that took off from South Florida, was forced to make an emergency landing after a passenger bit a flight attendant and yelled profanities at other passengers. United Flight 762 was headed to Newark. Um, cell phone video obtained by TMZ shows a tense situation where a woman was screaming at other passengers. Flight attendants tried to de-escalate the situation and zip tie the woman. That's when the subject bit one of the flight attendants on the shoulder, ripping off a piece of his uniform. Suck my dick, said the woman to another passenger. Well then. Another cell phone video Look. shows the woman. <laughs> We can't have a zombie apocalypse now. My survival <laughs> plan died. I won't God. make it. That's a little dark. Zombie apocalypse is canceled. Another cell phone video shows the woman restrained, but continue to scream profanities at other passengers and allegedly threatening to kill a woman 
said, go back to Russia, old lady. Let go of me. I'm a fucking girl. You trying to kill me, said the woman to the flight crew who was trying to restrain her. Uh, the woman continued to berate the passengers and accuse, accuse the flight crew of having, quote, attitude problems. First of all, you stop being a girl <laughs> when you start biting chunks out of people. You no longer get to play the girl card. No, you can't that, hit no. me, I'm a girl. When you started biting chunks out of people. Now you are a woman. That's how, that's how. No, now you are a biter. <laughs> that's true, yes. Gen um, I, don't, I don't care what fucking plumbing you got. I don't care what your gender is. Now you're just a biter. You're a snapping turtle on two legs. <laughs> you're a problem. The fucking audacity. Attitude problems. Fucking you. Lady, you bit a guy. You took off part of his uniform with your mouth. Yeah. It's, it's not it, them that has attitude problems. Like, there's projection and there's projection. Like, yeah. dear God. Woman was removed by authorities. Flight crew was replaced by a new crew. Emergency landing delayed the flight by three and a half hours. Cell phone video captures passengers clapping once the woman was removed from the plane. <laughs> That's one of those weird moments you have in public. And nobody on the plane was ever seen again. <laughs> it's one of those they weird moments. Crashed. You, they crashed. Uh, it's, it's just it's one of those moments when you're in public and and all all of a sudden you and a bunch of strangers in a situation you weren't expecting are all drawn together in your own exuberance over yeah. seeing this motherfucker get theirs. That just, that make, that, that, that sparks some happiness. But also happiness. overseeing something you're not supposed to see. Yeah. Like, you're just on the plane. You got your headphones in. You just, uh, I'm taking a flight tomorrow. Like, you just want to get through it. And then all of a sudden, somebody's biting people for some reason. And it's like the fucking Matrix has glitched. I I didn't know this was an option, right? I didn't know I could just bite a motherfucker. Why didn't somebody tell me that? Because you can't. <laughs> <laughs> because that's a crime. Well, and you disgusting. Can. Well, you can, but there are consequences. I mean, you can do a lot of things. Technically, you can set people on fire, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't. <laughs> That's not a thing that you should do. You know, one of those things that, that's starting to bug me. You remember, you, you remember, you've seen this hot twa girl all over the place with that, that fucking viral. Yeah. Shit. And now she's getting a show and she's like, yeah, she's getting a show. That is a bad idea. Because is she just going to make that noise for like an hour? I guess. Once you start start that off, then that that's like that you have established there is a path to public bizarre shit leading to that's a career now. Oh, that ship has sunk. Yeah. We've been doing that for easily 10 years now. Yeah. You go viral on the internet, and the next thing you know, they try and give you a TV show, and then they figure out that meme move approximately twice the speed of light. Nobody gives a fuck anymore gives after fuck. about a week. Well, That's what happened to that poor kid from the... You are so dumb. You are really dumb. Yeah. Like, the same cycle happened with him. Yeah. Well, what we learned this week is... um. You can bite people, but you shouldn't. <laughs> like, like some, we got some kindergarten remedial shit in here. You can bite a person, but you shouldn't. But don't. Uh, don't. We've learned that if you are stealing from a bank and you work at the bank, they can see that. And you know how you should know that. 
you work at a bank. Yeah. You know how this works. But also, if your banker comes to your house and asks for blank checks, say no. That's that's a bad call. You don't have to give them to them. We've learned that a part of the apparently black market Lego fence is a career. I don't know. I feel like I should have been, career. I should have been informed of this much younger. I think I would. What kills me is he wasn't even playing paying market rate. The article said that. Yeah. He was he was underselling them because it was stolen. You know. That's um, messed up. That's messed up. That's ex- that's exploitation. <laughs> We've learned that your teachers, some of them, barely contained loathing of you. You never knew it, but they did. Um, we've learned that maybe if you're about to get on a plane, leave the pineapple grenades behind. Even if they're not real, I promise you can get some others off the internet when you get home. Just mail them. Just mail them. Of course, if that gets scanned by the wrong people, that's going to start an entire other thing. (laughs) Uh, and finally, we've learned, apparently, at any given point, at any given day, someone is crossing a border with snakes in their pants. And that's how they make their living. I'd rather be a Lego fence if I had to choose. It's like the worst episode of Dirty Jobs ever, right? 